Ah. Parky 8 Cell is a nine-bedroom, illustrious country mansion in Hertfordshire, England. If you were to drive past it, you would see a stoic, stately home in the distance, hidden behind walls and extensive grounds. However, most who drive by will be unaware of its history, specifically one occupant who defied all of society's expectations in the most devious and unexpected way. The house itself was built in 1539 by Howard Bouchier on the land of a suppressed priory. However, it is in the 17th century when it is further remodelled by the occupying Ferris family that our infamous resident enters the picture. Catherine Ferrers was born on the 4th of May, 1634, at Bayford in Hertfordshire, to Knighton Ferrers and his wife, the former Catherine Walters. Her family were great favourites of King Henry VIII and Edward VI. The latter, the young King Edward, awarded the Ferrers family with multiple properties around Hertfordshire, including Marquette Sal. Her father died in 1640, and her grandfather, Sir George Ferris, died soon after. As Catherine's brother, who would have been heir to the family fortune, had died young, a court decreed that she be the sole heir of the grandparents' estate at the age of just six years old. Catherine's widowed mother remained and remarried later that year to Sir Simon Fanny. Such as Claude Duval and James McLean. A secret chamber 
has it that during her many years alone, Catherine would invite groups of wealthy nobles for dinner parties, rest and relaxation. The guests would enjoy copious amounts of food and drink, and once satisfied, would head to their carriages to be transported home. As the guests left, Catherine would make her way to her room, change into male highwayman attire, sneak out of the house via the secret chamber behind the fireplace, chase after her departed guests, and rob them at gunpoint on the nearby highway. To assist in this gambit, Catherine allegedly partnered with Ralph Chaplin, a local farmhand. The two terrorized the highways of Hertfordshire, as further chaos was attributed to her, such as burning houses, slaughtering livestock, and even killing an officer of the law. However, this could just as easily be attributed to brigands and bandits left to roam the countryside without purpose after the Civil War. The legend has it that one fateful night saw Catherine and Ralph attempted to rob a stagecoach. Unbeknownst to them, one of the passengers had concealed the pistol and shot Catherine in self-defence. She rode back to her home as fast as she could, yet succumbed to her wounds, where she was discovered outside by her attendants in full male dress, and discreetly carried back to the home for burial. So is the legend true. Ralph Chaplin was allegedly caught and executed on Finchley Common the same night as Catherine was wounded, which conveniently hides his name from record. The secret passageway in Mark Yates' cell conjures up all kinds of fanciful imagery of secret escapes and illicit activity, though ultimately it is unlikely that Catherine would have used the chamber, as Mark Yates' cell was sold by the Fanshaws early on into her marriage. So why does the legend persist? Why have pubs, such as the Wicked Lady in St. Albans, and streets, such as Ferrers Lane, named after her? Perhaps it is a revision of history, a tale of vengeance and rebellion that we all enjoy and expect when confronted with a history of someone who never seemed in control of their own destiny, to empower the disempowered, even in death. Either way, Catherine Ferris has a lasting and enduring impact on the county of Hertfordshire. Thank you for joining me for this whispered history of Catherine Ferris, the Wicked Lady of Hertfordshire. I look forward to having you join me next time for more ASMR history, culture and